Hi everyone, it's Caitlin, one of your ULAs this semester for genetics, and today I'll be reviewing the types of mutations you've seen in lecture, as well as going through a couple of practice problems that would be similar to what you might see on your exam. So let's dive in. The first type of mutation you came across this semester was a substitution. As a review, a substitution is where you change one base or nucleotide. Here in this example, we changed a thymine to a guanine, and if we look at the reading frame, we notice that only one codon is affected. So this is the interesting thing about substitutions, is that only one codon is affected when a substitution occurs. More specifically, we have transitions and transversions. We use these terms to indicate what is changing to what. So we know that we have two types of uh, nucleotides. We have purines and pyrimidines. And to keep it straight, here's how I think about it. Transitions, you look at the word and you see the word transit. So you stay on the same transit line or the train has to stay on the tracks, however you want to think about it. But transitions are where you change from a purine to a purine or a pyrimidine to a pyrimidine. On the other hand, transversions are where you change to a different version of nucleotide. So you change from a purine to a pyrimidine or vice versa. The next type of mutation you were introduced to were indels or insertions and deletions. So an insertion is where you add one or more bases. You can see that here in the orange with the tandem repeat of the thymine and the guanine. Deletions on the other hand are where you remove one or more bases. So in the middle row, you can see the three adenines that were removed. Along with indels is the idea of frame shifts. So frame shifts happen when the reading frame is altered from what it's supposed to be. So here we have a plus one frame shift and a minus one frame shift. So in the plus one frame shift, we moved the reading frame, which you can see by those blue brackets, we moved it one to the right. And now we're starting with a cytosine instead of an adenine. And that is changing the amino acids that are being added to the protein. So we can also see the same thing happening in the bottom row and we can understand how frame shifts are very detrimental to proteins because they change all of the amino acids that are being added. The next type of mutations you came across were silent mutations. Silent mutations are a subset of substitutions because you're changing one base, but the corresponding amino acid that should be added is still added, so you're not changing any of the amino acids that are being added onto the chain. Missense mutations, however, change that amino acid. So you're changing one base, which also changes the amino acid. The final type of mutation that you were introduced to were nonsense mutations. This is where you change one base, and instead of an amino acid being added, you have a stop codon. So a way to remember this is when someone is speaking nonsense, you might say, wait, hold up. What did you just say? You can think about hold up as a premature stop codon, as a way to try to help you remember that nonsense mutations happen when you have a premature stop codon added. Now we can get into the practice problems. Feel free to pause the video at any time and do the problem along with me on your own piece of paper. I highly recommend doing all of this as you will probably see similar problems on your exam. What we're going to be working through is transcription and translation, and then we're going to see how mutations affect the transcription and translation of a common DNA strand. So this is our DNA sequence. We're going to be using this for the next four practice problems. Now we're going to transcribe it, and we're going to turn it into our mRNA sequence. So again, feel free to pause the video at any time and then catch back up. So this is our mRNA sequence. Now we're going to look at our reading frame. This would be our reading frame indicated by the red brackets. And we're going to look at our chart on the right and we're going to start translating it. So we start finding all of them on the right. And our final amino acid sequence looks something like this. So we're going to be using this information to compare against with our next four practice problems. So just keep this information in mind. So here's our first mutated DNA sequence. So we're gonna compare it to our original DNA sequence and we're gonna find our mutation. 
And once we look closely, we find that our mutation is this thymine right here. So we notice that we have just changed one base. So this would be a substitution, but more specifically, since both cytosine and thymine are pyrimidines, this would be a transition. Moving on, we're gonna transcribe this into our mRNA strand sequence. When we get this, we add our reading frame and we start translating. And we get this. It's kind of weird because this is a lot shorter than our original amino acid sequence. So we know that this is a substitution, more specifically a transition, but we also know that since we added a premature stop codon, that this would be a nonsense mutation. So here you say in the box, it says it's a substitution and a nonsense mutation. Moving on to our next mutated DNA sequence, we look and compare against our original DNA sequence and we find that our mutation occurred at this guanine right here. However, if you notice and you look closely, you'll see that this, this base was inserted. Everything else in the strand has remained the same, there's just a new base there. So this would be an insertion and we transcribe it into our mRNA sequence and we get this. We add our reading frame and notice how we have a random adenine at the end. That wasn't there before. That's because we experienced a frame shift. So everything after our inserted base got shifted back one. So instead of having our uracil guanine and guanine uh, codon, we now have a cytosine, uracil, and guanine codon. So this is going to change everything that we see after this. So we know that this is an insertion, but that this is also a frame shift mutation. Moving on to our third DNA sequence, we look closely and we find that our mutation occurred at this adenine right here. Notice how we only went and changed one base, so this would be a substitution as well. And since guanine and adenine are both purines, this would also be a transition. Moving on, we're gonna transcribe to our mRNA sequence. When we get this, we add our reading frame and we start translating. And we get this. We compare that sequence against our original amino acid sequence up in the top right corner and we find that they're identical. So we know that this is a substitution, but since nothing changed in the end, this is also a silent or a synonymous mutation. So you can see in the box there, it says it's a substitution, but it's also a silent and synonymous mutation. Our final DNA sequence is this. We look and we find the base that changed. We find it is this thymine right here. Notice how we only changed one base, so therefore this is a final substitution. We also know that since adenine is a purine and thymine is a pyrimidine, we're changing versions of nucleotides, so therefore this is a transversion. And so we move on, we transcribe to our mRNA sequence, we add our reading frame, and we start translating. And this is our final amino acid sequence. And when we compare it against our original amino acid sequence, we find that only one amino acid has changed where um, the mutation happened. So we see that there's a serine there. So this is a substitution, but it's also a missense or a non-synonymous mutation because it did change the amino acid that was added to the chain. So that's all I have for you today. Um, hopefully this gives you some where to start with studying for your mutation section of the exam. Um, you will probably see a similar question to the ones above that we worked through. Um, so yeah, I wish you the best of luck studying and um, I hope you have a great exam experience.